days of summer are still banging, but pigskin people are always slamming. Whack, bam, whip, boom, bang, boom. Yes, sir. Today, you'll get all the gridiron and diamond wars all day, baby, right here on Fox. First, football and the biggest skirmish of the year. Hey, if you don't know how much this game means, you don't know nothing. Warwick's getting it done. But the Bucks undefeated? Yeah, and they play football on Pluto. Okay, maybe so. But the Cheese Gang still has Brett and Reggie. And those guys do show up for these kind of games, you know. Washington and Philly renew their love affair. We want to kick that. DC's been scary good. And their national defense has been resurrected. However, Philly's fired up because another loss might shoot down their playoff flight. Hey, we got to come alive now. Hey, partner, the Cowboys gallop to the Big Apple to play the Giants. I'm looking sexy, as you can see. Well, <laughs> I don't know about that, but your ground game ain't exactly good looking. Meanwhile, the gents will go with Wheatley, and their D's been playing kind of neatly. Good job, defense. Good job. The Lions shuffle to Bill's town. Buffalo. Hey, nice time. But beware, Barry and the Lions are scorching. Sanders breaks it. Nobody can beat us. No kidding. How about those Vikes? They have the NFC's top rusher, the NFC's best receiver, the league's number one TV man. Today, the Vikings play the Cactus Boys, where they hope a win's finally in the cards. Showtime. Yeah. Now, live from Pro Football's hallowed hall, Lambeau Field, four guys who are eating up today's great matchups on the one and only Fox NFL Sunday. And welcome to Lambeau Field, folks, as you take a look at a shot just under two hours ago as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers team bus rolled up here and heading off the bus, the team leader, Tony Dungy. He's got this squad 5-0 and oh, and another big reason for the team's success, Trent Dilfer, looking impressive on the season. As impressive, 60,000-plus here at Lambeau Field, all cheering on what will be a big contest. And, folks, because this has become such a big matchup, we decided to lock up the Malibu House and head back here to Lambeau Field. It's the undefeated Tampa Bay Buccaneers looking to go 6-0 for the first time in team history against the defending world champion Green Bay Packers. And hello, everyone. I'm James Brown. Happy to have you alongside of us for this big game. Joining me, my partners, Howie Long and Ronnie Lott. And yes, Terry Bradshaw is here. He's playing the part of journalist. We will get to him in a second. And Howie, this is indeed a big matchup. But boy, it seems like we've been here a lot. I feel like Bill Murray and Groundhog Day, JB. It's Puxatani PA all over again. Every day I wake up, I'm in the Apple, Apple Valley Caper Inn or whatever it is we're staying at. I'm having a ball. But Terry Bradshaw said that it's going to be hidden weather, man, and I can't wait. I think it's going to be a great game What's today. Terry They're going to get out. I know about people. hitting people. <laughs> oh, I know a little bit. Terry is so accustomed to getting hit. Well, we've been talking about him an awful lot. Folks, we said we'd get to him. Let's check in with Terry right now, who's over with Buccaneers head coach Tony Dungy. Thank you. Thank you, JB. I'm here with Tony Dungy, head coach of Tampa Bay, and I got to ask you, Tim, what would it mean to this franchise if you could take care of the Super Bowl champion Packers today and go back to Tampa 6 and 0? Well, I think it'd be great for our city and, and our players. Uh, our guys are very fired up about the way the season's gone, but uh, you have to keep winning. That's what we want to do today. Why has this team turned around? How has that happened? I think it's just a belief in ourselves, uh, some of the young guys coming in and really doing a great job, but our veterans just being real steady and making sure that we believe in each other. Tony, there were 10 coaching vacancies in the National Football League last year, of which none of those vacancies were filled by a minority coach. Is your success, do you think, going to help other minority coaches get a head coaching job in the NFL? Well, I sure hope so, Terry. Hopefully, uh, owners will look at this and say, we don't have to do things the way we've always done them. Uh, we can look at different avenues, and, and it just might work. You go back inside this locker room, what are you going to tell this team before kickoff? Well, we're going to tell them uh, that we're in the spot we want to be in, playing the defending champions at their place, and if we play 60 minutes of buck ball, we'll win the game. Buck ball, JB, 60 minutes. You heard it right here. All right, Terry, and hopefully Tony's success has shown that a good coach, period, deserves the job and the opportunity. All right, folks, now that you're not going anywhere for a while, time now for our Snickers Fox Watch. And obviously, this is a major NFC Central matchup, but there's also a big match today in the NFC East as well. It's the 3-1 and one Washington Redskins on the road to face the Philadelphia Eagles, and that's where we can find our own Kenny Albert. And good afternoon, Kenny. 
Thanks, JB. The 1-3 and three Eagles host the 3-1 and one Redskins here at the Vet. Philadelphia coach Ray Rhodes said on a scale of 1 to 10, the importance of this game is a 10. Now, despite speculation early in the week, Ty Detmer remains the starting quarterback for the Eagles, although the backup Rodney P took 30% of the snaps in practice this week as opposed to the usual 15. Now, Detmer and the Eagles will be up against the number one rated pass defense in the NFL. What a contrast. The Redskins first against the pass, second to last against the run, and Washington will be without two starters on the defensive line, Kennard Lang and Chris Mims. We expect a thriller the last 11 times these NFC Eastern Division rivals have met. The games have been decided by seven points or less. That's the story in Philadelphia. Now to New York and Dick Stockton. Well, Kenny, everything's a go for the Dallas Cowboys. Larry Allen and Chad Hennings will start, but their big concern, of course, is quarterback Troy Aikman trying to keep him in one piece against all the blitzes he's had to face. For the Giants, they've got problems. Dave Brown has a strained chest muscle, and so he is going to be wearing this contraption, which is called a shoulder strap, going to limit his motion. They'll see how he is before the game. Danny Cannell, the second-year quarterback, waits in the wings. Tiki Barber out of action for three weeks. Hyrone Wheatley makes his his second career start and this week the Giants signed Eric Pegram who should add a lot of speed a former thousand yard rusher that's the story here right now let's go up to Buffalo and Paul Kennedy thanks Dick as you can see it's a gorgeous day in Buffalo where emotions are flowing on both sides of the football field much like Niagara Falls the man who has to be feeling it the most Buffalo's inside linebacker Chris Spielman who led Detroit in tackles for eight straight years before being forced out he faces his former Lion teammates for the first time this afternoon on the other side of the field Buffalo's longtime tight end Pete Metzelar starts for Bobby Ross today as David Sloan is playing on above ankle Barry Sanders fractured his nose a week ago in the upset trial over Green Bay. He has been fitted for a face shield and is set to hunt his four straight 100 yard rushing effort. He, along with everybody in Detroit, pulling for a Packers win this afternoon over Tampa Bay, JB, up in Lambeau Field. All right, thank you very much, Paul. And for those of you not getting an early game, you'll see the Arizona Cardinals hosting the Minnesota Vikings. That'll be coming your way later today at 4 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Pacific, right here on Fox as we welcome you back to our road show here, the Fox NFL. Sunday talking about Dallas how I guess we ought to try to get some things straight the most often asked question is what's wrong with Dallas special teams and defense has in fact been carrying them last week you said there's been an offensive philosophy change if they go back to the old philosophy will that ensure old results oh I don't think so JB the problems are numerous in Dallas right now and it has nothing to do with Troy Aikman Emmett Smith or Michael Irvin. They're running a triangle offense down there right now. Unfortunately, they have three players. The only place that works in Chicago with the Bulls. They need support from a secondary receiver. Tight end position has not been filled properly. The offensive line has been a little bit erratic. The center position has not been a plus to them. It's been a step down. I'm not sure that guy's a player now or ever will be. Left guard Nate Newton has struggled. They've struggled with blitz picks up pickups. 25 first plays last week versus Dallas. Chicago blitz 18 times. Hit Troy Aikman 17 times. There's something wrong there. Yeah, it's something wrong there, especially when you get hit like that. But you got to look at this team, the Giants, and you got to say to yourself that their team's going to come out and they're going to attack the Dallas Cowboys. The one thing that you will see, though, is John Fox, the defensive coordinator, told me that he's going to put Sam Garns, the strong safety, on Bjornsson. They feel that Bjornsson is the key to this game. They also said that the special teams, special teams mean very special for the Dallas Cowboys. They got to stop prime time. But the tight end spot, Terry, is the spot that they have to figure out how to stop. They drafted David LaFleur, their tight end, number one out of LSU. They Got him in camp, found out he was a guy that was just happy to make the football team. Hasn't turned it up a notch. Satisfied. Anthony Miller pulled hamstring. They get rid of Kevin Williams, a wide receiver from the team last year. The reason being my, uh, is Aikman did not trust him. He didn't run his right routes accurately. Aikman is a, a precise quarterback. Miller, a guy, Aikman flat told him, I'm not throwing you the football. You're not going to play. You're not going to practice. I'm not going to throw you the ball. But LaFleur has to step it up at tight end. Teams are going to blitz, blitz, blitz. Your tight end can bail you out. This guy should be able to get the job done. He hasn't yet. You know what, TB? We haven't talked about this much at the national uh, level, but uh, certainly the absence of uh, Jay Novacek must be looming large in Troy's mind as well. Uh, well you heard how we talk about triangle offense. That's the tight end, 
a flanker, and a back. That's three people to one side. And right now, that's only two people because the tight end's not helping them out. All right, folks, let's talk a little bit of postseason in baseball. Last night, the Baltimore Orioles were looking to become the third team in the league to move to the league championship series. Last night against the Mariners in Camden Yards, it was Lou Pinella looking to keep his squad from going down even further. Ninth inning, top of the ninth. Jay Buhner smacks one right behind him. Paul Sorrento, back-to-back -back home runs. They go on to win it by the score of four to two to stay alive in the American League Division playoffs. David Wells looked impressive last night for the Yankees. Got a little bit of help from Paul O'Neill in the fourth inning. A grand slam off the of Indians reliever Chad O.J. That put the game away for the Yankees. Made it six to one. And folks, so tonight we have Game Four of the Yankees and Indians series. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern when we'll also be back to go over the big day in football and preview tonight's baseball game. All right, folks, let's check out what else is on top for today's show. Today's one and only Fox NFL Sunday. <laughs> There's a new force to be reckoned with down in Tampa. And these young guns are just looking to blow teams away. Howie sets his sights on the impressive Buccaneer defense. And, hey kids, you hang out in the corner, you're gonna lose something or get hit hard. Especially when you're in Chris Dishman or Daryl Green's neighborhood. Pam Oliver talks with the Redskins cornerman who rule their roost. Then, just when the word dynasty was beginning to sound good, things have turned a little sour in Cheese Town. The resemblance to last year's super team is hardly there, leaving Ronnie to find out what's wrong in Title Town. Coming up, coming at you, the one and only Fox NFL Sunday.